Definitely. So while we've got some time here before the second map gets loaded up, uh, I was asking you earlier about like Africa TV and that experience. How, how was that for you? Uh, I was just a cast, or I just did a couple of events for them. I did some League of Legends events too. It was really fun. They, you know, they sent me to Korea, so that was really awesome. I I, I stayed in Gangnam Seoul, and it was beautiful, and it was the time of my life. Uh, so I really support them. I really love Africa TV. You guys should definitely support their global channel. They started, you know, with the new global channel that they're trying to help get, trying to get set up here and established here in America and then on the uh, NA side of things. So go support them. You know, they're the ones with GSL now. And they actually have an event going on right now. It's called Streamcraft. They're giving away an Africa Freaks sweater right now too, which is really cool. Streamcraft, that just sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, they. this is the second time they did it. They gave away a Razer Chroma keyboard before too. Oh, that's really nice. A Razer yeah, Chroma I keyboard? So bad. There's no way I'm going to turn down a, a giveaway of a Razer. Like, yeah, I, I want it you, for sure. They're giving me? away a mouse right now, so <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of events all the time. Hmm. All right, so ugh, I, I, I was kind of checking the Twitch chat, and apparently, I'm having mic issues again, which I don't know why this is happening because I was perfectly fine during practice. For some reason, that always happens when we go live with like on gaming. I don't know what it is. I think it might just be your mic cutting out randomly. Is it? Mm hmm Ah, oh, jeez. Every time I hear it, I just try to take over. <laughs> That's good. That 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 means I have a very like. Oh my god! I can't speak. There's a word that I was looking for, and I can't remember. It's just a very good co-caster. Very oh. competent. Co Why? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Go ahead oh, and take yes, your bow. Yes, Brush the shoulders off. Brush the shoulders off. Yes. Take your bow. Do a little dab. We're good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't believe you just made me do that. Did you do the dab? I did. You missed it. Well, I, I, I I'm in the lobby, so. <laughs> well, do you have two monitors? Oh. Mm. No, I don't. I live in an old old age. Yeah, I, I need to catch up to the current times, don't I? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I have a very small desk, and it can only really fit one monitor. That's a bigger problem. Um, it's hanging on the wall. I could. I could, maybe. That actually sounds really good. Just hanging on the wall. You know right. what? Maybe I'll do that. Maybe <laughs> for, like, the next time we have a show match ready, I'll have a double monitor. <laughs> right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have a third one, but I just need a cable for it. Trying to go big. That'd be uh that'd have to be a long cable, right? Like one of those ones that can connect everything. Oh, I have a hundred foot long Ethernet cable too. A hundred feet? Yep. That's insane. You gotta stay directly connected. Oh Can't have lag God. ever. Where do you live that you need a hundred foot Ethernet cable? <laughs> oh man. The game is starting, it looks like. I'm actually really quickly changing my bet on the um what's that called the st the star uh star sense yes star sense bet? Uh, yeah i just signed up for that one too so i'm actually yeah. just changing my bet now no definitely match arena sc2 replay stats yeah the starcraft 2 replay stats definitely a good website i just learned about all this stuff today but uh yeah we're loading in this map on uh, Newkirk Precinct. What do you think about this map? This map is very famous for like proxy <laughs> all-ins. And to be completely honest, considering innovations, like the fact that the momentum is all on his side right now, I really would not be surprised to see him go for a proxy fact here or something, something some sort of like proxy cyclone pressure. Uh, but at the same time, like, because the map is so well known for that, there's a good chance that Dark could prepare himself for that right. as well. So the yeah. question is, the, here's the question. Are these players going to play standard or are they going to try to play unorthodox, unpredictable so that they can throw the opponent? 
Well, it looks like it's time to find out. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have playing as the Red Terran. Already up one game, we have Innovation. And his opponent dropping game one on Abyssal Reef, but he's nowhere near out of this out, out of this yet. It is Dark. And if you notice, Novea, Dark has gone for a pull first build. He really I, likes to do this. Yes, I notice on this map particularly, yeah. he really likes to do that. Um, it counters the expo. It's a giant ramp that you have to wall off, and it's just like it, it really counters the expo here because you're not going to be able to wall that entire thing off at this given time. Yeah, Dark really likes to do this against innovation. Terran players in general going for a pull first, running the links, and instead of running straight towards like innovation's base, he's going to run it around so dodge the Reaper scout. Mm -hmm. and, and, and innovation, it, he's he's well versed in dark style, so if he knows this, he should keep his Reaper kind of at home and patrol it around the map. Either that, or when he's going to go scout dark, don't go scouting in the like the pathway right away, but kind of go up the map a little bit. But uh, yeah, dark just... actually, he did go pull first, but he didn't actually grab any links. But okay, yeah, see there it is, innovation with his, his Reaper scout. Yeah, he is doing exactly what you said, you know, just keeping an eye out, seeing if there are any Ling run bys, like you were saying, because he knows that this is the possibility, especially on this map. But we do have some speedlings coming out, or some drones. Actually, it doesn't really look like he's really uh, going for too much just yet. Probably right when the upgrade finishes, he'll be going in. To be able to do that, we do have the factory going down now and two Hellions, so he's going to be able to protect against the early speedlings if uh, Dark so chooses to come in. I really... I really like what Dark is doing here right now about this is really throwing innovation off. He's trying to figure out what are you doing? Like why haven't you scouted me right now? Why haven't yeah. you any links? I don't and I, I just I mean, He's Dark's looking for a third base. Yeah, exactly. Like at the three minute mark speeds up. Okay, so the Reapers because yeah, this yeah. Reaper coming in right now, he's going to be picked off by these links, but he's going to see this third base go down, but actually he was a little bit distracted, so we didn't see this Ling run by that uh, Dark was trying to do, but we do already have a couple Hellions out, and these Hellions are actually are already on route to Dark's base. We do have a couple Queens for defense over here, but I mean, it looks like he's going for that same Hellion push that we saw last time. We have two more Hellions coming out, and uh, I don't know. We also have uh, the Raven. Oh man, the Raven. Were you expecting the Raven? Absolutely, I was expecting of course. the Raven. <laughs> this is innovation style, 100%. Hellions mm -hmm. for map control, Ravens for the harass, and then of course Ravens with their detection. You get to clear out creep tumors so quickly and so easily. You get to save up the 50 energy on their orbital command so that you don't need to use it for scans, and you can use it for mules instead. Like, the Raven is, is a beautiful transition that Terran players have been utilizing. Yeah, Ooh. it does a countless damage to the, the mineral lines here. I don't know if you caught that, but he innovation lifted a starport Raven, which was a mistake because he normally builds a second Raven. There it is. There's ah. the second Raven. We do have Dark coming in with the Overlord, so he's going to see what innovation is doing. He does know that there is a Raven in production. He's going to know this, and he's going to be able to react accordingly. We do have the other Raven, the first Raven coming in now. We do have a Spore Crawler and the Queen ready to defend this, though. All right, see, this is exactly what I was talking about, is that they, they understand each other so well. He's already got a Spore Crawler placed and a Queen ready here. And he's bringing the Lings in now. So yeah, we do have an Overlord that might go down. Is it going down? And it goes down. But that Overlord... Still was worth it. Got, yeah, yeah, it was, got all yeah, the information that he needed. That Overlord dying was definitely worth it. Getting plenty of scouting information done. Understanding that Innovation is going for a very standard... Uh, very standard play right now with, with the Raven opening, transitioning into a Bio with three racks. Adding the reactors on, he's getting marines now. This is classic innovation, exactly what he should be doing right now. And now that Dark knows you're not doing anything weird, you're not doing anything different, that you exactly do normally, now I know how I'm going to respond to this. Yeah, uh, what, do you think his response is going to be a mutiling bling composition? Because it seems like it might be going in that in that manner. He's already upgrading the speedlings. Uh, we don't see any tech from like a roach warren or anything like that. Well, the thing about Dark is he really likes to favor the, the Ling heavy style. He likes to ha make a bunch of Lings at, before he ever even drops down that Spire. He wants a lot of Lings for speed, a lot of Lings for map control, and then later on morph them into Banelings. He could stay on Ling Baneling for a very long time. He might not even see Mutas until like a 10 minute mark. And of course, since it's That's Dark... That's really good to confuse your opponent though, but I mean, Innovation knows him so well. 
And since it's dark, we're probably going to see corruptors. He's very well known for using corruptors, and that meters. Mm -hmm. Okay, the ravens coming these in. These ravens coming in again into the main. Oh, uh, yeah. But we have an army of queens just ready to defend this, like, and an army of overlords just to get vision of anything taking place. So dark is totally prepared for that. Those ravens aren't really going to be getting into there. The mineral line coming in with a good creep cleanup. Actually, going to be probably cleaning all of this creep up in the area, which is. He did a great creep spread, but... Okay, now he's gonna scan ahead and see the positioning of Dark's... Bailing speed has finished, so he needs to get off, or he's gonna get himself surrounded. Yeah, this is... <laughs> this is just gonna be a little bit... Oh man, the Banelings coming in, making good connections, but they weren't able to go off on the Marines, but they were able to take off some of those auto turrets. We still have those Hellions, though, able to barbecue those links and... He's just gonna have to keep morphing banelings to keep cleaning this up. I think innovation is definitely gonna have to retreat right now. And he's lost both him a lot. Yeah, but meanwhile, while this was going on, we actually had a Ling run by as well at the third base of innovation. So we kind of missed that. He was at, I'm not sure how many uh, workers he got off, but I did see him come in and do a counterattack during that. So we did see uh, Dark doing a little bit of harassment of his own, but we still see the Marine Trail coming in. We have the Widow Mines out now. He's trying to get all this creep cleaned up, and he's just he's just going to start being the relentless innovation that we know. Yeah, I actually did catch the link run by. Innovation caught on very quickly and retreated his SCVs. Didn't lose too much there. Okay. But as you can see, Dark's going for another one here, and that's exactly the thing about Newkirk. It's such a huge map with so many different paths you can take. Mm -hmm. So Dark is Dark is playing this very well right now. He's definitely he, he well he still, he hasn't lost twelve drones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He hasn't lost twelve drones, and as you can see, he's making up a lot of money. And so those are definitely going to go into meters. Yep, I figured it was probably going to be the Spire going down. It seems like that's Dark's style, you know, when you just see mostly speedlings for the quite some time. It seems like he always goes into a Spire after that. Usually if he's going with the Roaches or Precautionary Roaches, he'll have the Precautionary Roach den down prior to this. All right, so now the question here is, can Dark prevent his oh, spread? The beautiful, beautiful pickup, though. Innovation is always really great with these timings of these pickups, picking up his units right in the nick of time, not getting them any medibacks taken out. And we do have an army of mutas actually looking like they're going towards the uh, main base of Innovation. And now I'm not sure. Let's take a look and see if he has any. He does have one missile turret. So there really is not too many mutas. I, he's going to be able to get into a position, though, where he's going to be able to take out some tech structures. And that's exactly what he's doing. The Marines are coming back in home. To try to defend against this, he wasn't really able to pick off too much. Oh, and here comes Innovation building more missile turrets now. So he realizes that the Mermudas are going to be a giant problem. So he's going to want to stay defensively now and try to make sure his base doesn't die immediately when he tries to move out. So I like what Innovation is doing here, but Dark is doing a great job of keeping Innovation in his home so that he can go into that four base Zerg macro that we all know Dark is so good at. Yeah, I do like Innovation's placement that he's starting to begin doing with the Widow Mines. He's starting to throw them out on different places of the map to be able to stop any territory that areas that, you know, Ling run bys could take place. You know, we just, we do see the Overseer, though, which is great because, you know, when I started saying that there was no Overseer with the Mutas, but he's going to be able to scout out all of these uh, Widow Mines here, too. It's, it's kind of even right now for both players. It's really hard yeah. to say who's winning right now. Although, I just saw 3-3 three, three coming here for Innovation. It's a bit of a time crunch. Very soon, Innovation's army is going to be really scary, and Dark's going to be on 2-2 two, two versus 3-3. Three, three. So, with Innovation starting 3-3 three, three now... Dark, oh, wait, Muta's in the base. Oh, holy crap, look at that. Muta's here in the main base. Link's here in oh, the Oh, wow, just... yeah, the Muta's in the main base. You're right. We do oh. have mutas. Oh wow, they're going to be oh, just taking out the engineering base. The three-three is not going to come from innovation. That is beautiful. Is he going to get the second one? And he is. Oh, that was an excellent play by Dark. And it looks like innovation knows that this is happening, and he's going to go in and he's going to try to do some kind of damage, cleaning up creep. These lings are getting a really great surround. The widow mines go off, but the banelings still remain. The pickup happens, and he's getting out. The mutas are still at the. Uh, it's natural doing a ton of damage. 
But how many drones are we or SCVs are we losing? This is his revenge of the worker game. <laughs> Thirty-two workers have been killed here in this game so far for oh. innovation. So he wow. is just. Oh. Oh, nice little. We don't mind making a good hit. Yeah. That was extremely worth it, though. Yeah, an important thing to note here is while all this was going street and then successfully grabs, uh, established a fifth hatchery down. So Dark is, is in a great position and he sniped the 3 3. That is huge. Oh, that wow. I love burrowed banelings. Do you see that? There's three banelings burrowed right outside of the base. So if these Marines walk on top of it, oh, it's just going to be beautiful. He did see oh, them, though. He sees it. Yeah. yeah, that was great from innovation, being able to get rid of those before they did it. Oh, another widow mine making it again. Actually, these mutas, and they are going down in health. This is actually this is a great move here from it, spreading out these widow mines and putting them. And that way, it's harder for Dark to predict where the widow mines will be. And so he's being taken his. We may have a big battle coming up here soon again. Yeah, it looks like they're just kind of doing a back and forth on the edge of the creep, trying to get rid of it. These banelings are morphed, but. Oh man, I, they're both maxed in, in supply. They are both maxed in supply. The Another has... Muta run by actually happening in the natural. More SCVs going out. Oh man, Innovation is just losing so many SCVs here. The Zerg Swarm is just completely real now. Oh my god, is he gonna get the 3-3 again? Oh god, Oh my gosh, yes. It. He's going for the 3-3 again, guys. These mutas, the mobility, Dark is just completely abusing this mobility factor, and he's not letting Innovation get his tech up. This this hurts Innovation so much. You can see yeah. he's already starting up. You don't need to. You're going to have three engineering base. Cancel one. <laughs> uh, Novea, I don't know what Innovation's going to do with the engine. I don't know. It's, he just uh, knows they keep taking out, getting taken out. He's like, I'm just going to build a bunch. Okay, oh, man, those Bainley's making a really good, good hit. Oh, that's just an overwhelming amount of banelings. I don't really think there's anything that innovation can do here. Dark takes the win, evening up the score, one-one. That was absolutely a magnificent game played by Dark. Yeah, so many great things happened for Dark that game. First mm -hmm. off, he didn't sustain early, didn't sustain early game damage mm -hmm. by losing drones, and he prevented innovation from dealing any damage with the army that he moved out. Innovation moved out with army three times that game, but he never pushed into dark space. It was always outside and he was always fighting on creep. Yeah, so he definitely dark... held the map control there. You know, he was able to, you know, replenish his creep immediately. That was just, uh Taking yeah, and... out those engineering base, I think was just, you know, the game changer. I think there definitely needed to be way more anti-air at the base, more widow mine action. I just don't think he had the defense to really, you know, counter the mobility of these mutas. Yeah, I was just about to comment on the engineering base dying <laughs> because I mean, Novea, you know as a Zerg player and I know as a Terran player how crucial that 3-3 three, three timing is. Oh yeah. Because the 3-3 three, three is what makes the difference in those battles. Those battles that innovation had. If he had 3-3, three, three, they would have gone so differently. Yeah, that was a great game. All right, but on another note, guys, we have hit our $175 goal there on Matcherino. Thank you to those of you guys that have donated your money and helped crowdfund this tournament so we can do – we're doing the interview? Is that is that what that means, Seeker? I think 200 is the interview. Is 200 the interview? I think 200 is the interview. Ah, 200, guys. So we need 25 more dollars for an interview. Yes. Uh, I just want to take this moment to apologize in advance for the audio. I don't know what's happening. Like, it keeps happening every time we go live with Polygon Invitational. Never happens during practice. I don't know why. I really don't know how, how to explain this. What? <laughs> okay, so now you're cutting out, Marsh. <laughs> uh, I could give that a shot.
Yeah, do okay. you. Whew. Guys, you can buy tickets on Matcherino. Don't forget about that. Don't forget about our raffle that's going on. Oh, yes. Yes. Six whole months of it? I thought it was just a, a month. So the StarCraft replay stats, that when you go onto this website, if you guys actually check it out, sign up for it. Uh, we're giving away a raffle tonight. All you have to do is purchase a point or purchase a ticket. It's two points. Pretty easy. It's on the Match Arena website. Um, if you guys know about StarCraft replay stats, they, it will give you uh, advice. You can upload your replays on there. You can check tons of statistics that the game system does not quite have. So six whole months, all you have to do, two points. I don't know about you, Novea, but the fact that the score is tied 1-1 makes me very happy. Because yeah. Because that means now going into game number three, both players are feeling the same amount of pressure now. Yeah, it's no it's, it definitely evened it all out. <laughs> yeah, it's no longer. Because, like, you know, going into a game, you feel the pressure of being down 1-0 in this best of seven. You know, Dark was probably feeling it, but he kept his composure. And really yeah. executed a beautiful, uh, just a, a great build, great decision making in that Newkirk precinct, precinct game. He just, the Muta sniping down the eBay just hurt innovation so much. Yeah, I think that was a really good choice it. to go the Mutas on that route. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.